Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84 and a big thank you for coming back and choosing another one of my videos right here on the YouTube channel. Today we are into the final season of the Celtic Rebuild. Yes, season five is upon us and we are now close to the finish line. There are just three episodes left in the series. If you've been with us the past couple of days, you'd have seen that we have had some success here at Celtic. In the past couple of seasons, we have won the Europa League. We have also now won the Champions League. We are current Scottish Premiership holders also. And in today's episode, we kick off the season as we look to defend both of our titles as we move forwards through the final season. So we've had some success along the way. And as always, in today's episode, we have moved forward to the 3rd of September 2025. So as I said, the final season is now upon us and has begun. And as always, we are going to start off the episode with the transfers. We have got some players going out. We have got some players coming in and we are going to look to kick on as we look to defend both the SPL and the Champions League. So as always, we're going to start off with the players that have gone out first. Transfer windows at this point of the game are two-parters. So we have from the 9th of June when the transfer window opens, we can sign domestic players. We then have from the 1st of July where we can also sign players from outside of Scotland. So let's start off on the right-hand side. You can see that there are three players that went out from the 9th of June. Uh, Greg Taylor has gone to Watford on a free transfer. Anthony Ralston has gone to Fulham on a free transfer. And Stuart Heenan, he has gone out on loan to Queen of the South. The only player that came in at this point, we've been raving about him for days. I've got a feeling he's not going to get much first team action. But if we can work him into the team, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to score goals because you saw his record for Hibernian across the past four seasons. If he can get in the team and score some goals for us, then I think it will be a snip of a purchase. But we did have to pay slightly over the odds, uh, £10.5 million, pounds, rising to £12.5 million. Pounds. But it's going to stop Ibernian's top scorer from scoring against us. And um, We always have trouble when he scores against us. So at least this time he'll be doing the scoring for us, hopefully. Going forwards then to the next part of the transfer window. And a few players also leaving after the 1st of July. Uh, firstly, Jonathan Afalabi went to Shelbourne on the 28th of June, but then Tati Chung went to Palmer on a free. David Turnbull has ended up leaving the club, going to Porto for £21 million. Justice Oguchi, he left to go to Morton on loan. Michael Johnson has gone to Queen South on loan. Henry Lawrence has ended up leaving the club. Now, if you remember, we signed Henry Lawrence on a free transfer, we did. So we have made £17 million profit by selling him to Porto in Portugal and as you can see by his player math the reason that we bought him or we signed him on a free was because of his versatility I mean we've made 17 million pound profit on free transfer I cannot do much better than that and the last player that has gone out is Super Chop Sarachat uh, unfortunately we couldn't get a work permit for him even in season five despite the fact that we had sent him out on loan to Willem Dre, Hanover, Willem Dre again and Freiburg so he has I don't know if he didn't go on loan to Freiburg. We've sold him to Freiburg, but he had quite a few loans. We couldn't get him a work permit, so he has left the club permanently for 975000 So the final couple of players then to come into the club. The first is Lautaro Tamai. He is a regen. As you can see, he has five-star potential ability, three-star current ability against my own squad. 18 years old, five foot nine, plays in the middle of the park. He looks exceptional. Uh, if we go to his career stats, you can see broke through in the first team at Talleres, uh, played 12 games in the first season, 10, 22, 13 last time out. His average ratings have been going up and up. We have swooped in and signed him for £8.5 million. Pounds. I think he's a player that's going to push us forwards. And the final player to come in in the save at this point is Isaac Hansen Aaron. Uh, he has come from Manchester United, 21 years old, contracted to Celtic now, and valued at 70 to 81 million pounds. He popped up on a scouting report. I took one look, and you can see dribbling 17, first touch of 16, passing 17, technique of 16, work rate 13, vision 15, off the ball 16, determination 17, composure 16, acceleration 16, agility 16, pace of 15, stamina of 14, strength of 12. He's only five foot ten. And 10 stone 12 pounds but he can play through the middle or off the right hand side i think this is going to work out to be a bit of a bargain i mean what did we actually play manchester united 
61 million pounds. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a statement signing, but I've got a feeling this player is special, and I think he's going to be a bargain even at 61 million pounds. Right then, so that is the last of the transfers for the summer transfer window. We do, of course, have the January transfer window or the winter transfer window to come tomorrow. So there will be a few more signings, I think. But first, let's look at the club finances to see what's left in the bank. There is £12.5 million still left for us to spend. There is £122 million overall in the overall balance. Uh, wage budget, £1,439,454 per week. We're only spending £1.3 million of that, so plenty of room in that too. Uh, the club is operating at such a high level and we are really generating so much money i can see why the board want to, wouldn't want to give me all of that 122 million pounds but i've got a feeling that once we get to the winter transfer window there is going to be more money available so we can go out and spend a bit more in terms of the club vision then so after we won the champions league the spl and i believe the scottish cup last season uh this year they want to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team Play attacking football, play high tempo, pressing football. So we get a delighted, a pleased and a very pleased for that. Work within the wage budget, of course. Spend the original transfer budget. We did most of it, £12.5 million left. Uh, minimum two-year contracts for first-team players not being judged on. And then this is now where it gets a little bit muddling. So end of the current season, Champions League reached the first knockout round at a minimum. UEFA Super Cup, not important. Uh, Sink Premiership, win the Sink Premiership. Scottish Cup win the Scottish Cup and Premier Sports Cup has become not important. So I'm presuming as we have got further and further in the Champions League, they really aren't too fussed about the Secondary Cup anymore. So uh, even though it says win a domestic cup, which that would tick the box off, they aren't judging us on that. So hopefully if we do win that, that would tick that off anyway. Uh, end of the 26-27 season. Now this is a bit of an important point because obviously we're in the 25-26 season so the end of the next season the club would look to be sold which wouldn't be a good thing for us because of obviously transfer embargoes or not knowing who the new owners were to be so it's good that this is the final season coming up I mean our job security is very secure and they're still pleased with the job that we have done uh, overall so at this point also we would have kicked our season off we go to the competitions tab, you can see quickly that we are top of the SPL with 10 points from four games. Uh, Champions League, we have been drawn with Benfica. Atletico Madrid at Hoffenheim, so a decent group really to start the defence of our trophy. Uh, Super Cup, we won the Super Cup despite it not being important to the board. Still in the Scottish Cup and still in the Premier Sports Cup. So a few things to show you there then. Ready for Super Cup. Played off against Man UFC. We beat them 2-1. We'll cover that in just a second when we go over the schedule. And in terms of the Premiership, if we go into there and have a little look in detail. Played three. Uh, sorry, played four, won three, drawn one. Goal difference of four and ten points. So let's hit the schedule then and show you how we have got on in those games. So a bit of a dodgy start to the season. A 1-1 draw against Motherwell was not the way we had planned to start. But Supernat at Moanta scoring after 51 and Sandy Cappy scoring after 71 for the equaliser. But since that game, we have been on a roll. Second game of the season, we beat Rangers 3-2. Lautaro Tamai scoring two. Daniel Ballard scoring. And then Katic and Kwame scoring for Rangers. But three points on the board there. We then beat Manu FC in the Super Cup, as I said. Uh, Lucien Agume scoring for them. But Conor Gallagher and Brandon Williams scoring against the former club. To win us the Super Cup. Uh, we then were in action in the Premier Sports Cup second round. Demolished Falkirk 6-2. Two goals from Declan McManus for Falkirk. But two for Isaac Hansen Aaron. Supping at Moanta getting on the score sheet. Eddie and Ketty are also scoring. And Sven Botman scoring two. Back in Premiership action. Then after that, Hibs we beat 1-0. Remember we took this bit off of them. So he couldn't score against us. And we won the game 1-0 through Gonzalo Villar. And then finally, Dundee, we beat 4-2. Shaden Morris getting the goal. John Joe Kenny scoring an own goal. But Dewsbury Hall, Conor Gallagher, Sven Botman and Brandon Williams scoring goals for us. So then, final thing to do before we wrap up is uh, look at the squad, the assistant report. So our best 11 then, according to our assistant at this point of time. Silva, the goalkeeper, Juranovic, Ballard, Piotrowski and Brandon Williams. Dewsbury Hall, Villar and Gallagher in the middle with Okafor, Plata and Moanta now taking the 
top role. Uh, I don't think that is our best 11. I mean, if we have a little look at the squad depth and see exactly who we have got in what positions, you can see in terms of striker, Lazaro is our best rated, and Ketia, John Joe Kenny, Okafor, but also still got Mitrovic who can play there. Wide left, Okafor, Lazaro, Mwanta, and Ketia are platter. Hansen, Mwanta, Okafor, platter, and Ketia on the right. Central midfield, we are fully loaded in terms of the three positions that we play with. Uh, defender left, Botman is shown up as the best, but Brandon Williams. Uh, Juranovic is our preferred choice from our assistant, but I suppose uh, Brandon Williams will probably play there more often than not. Uh, defender left, centre and right centre, we have plenty of depth in those positions. And defender right, Piotrowski, Williams, Juranovic can all play over on that side. And then only two goalkeepers in the squad at the moment, with Ruby Silva and Ryan Mullen being on the books. But we also have a couple of youngsters that probably aren't showing up because they are one-star abilities. Uh, the one thing that I did forget to show you, and we will go back and do, is if we go into the Premiership and go into the player stats then, you can see straight away that most goals... Admiral Musgri is now top goal scorer with five. Uh, Latoro Tamay, even though he is a midfielder, he has two goals and he's on the list for us. Most assists, Finley Pollock at the top. Keenan Dewsbury Hall is on there with two, so only a couple behind. Most shots, uh, Jackson Conway of the USA, playing for Hibernian, has had 16 shots. We've got Okafor Moanta on that list for us. Most player of the match awards, Conway, Cadden, Hector Ingram, Fraser. And then we have three players in Tamai, Dewsbury Hall and Villar. Most key passes, Hanson Aaron. He's the top of that list with 20 key passes from just three appearances. It's quite impressive. Dewsbury Hall is also on the list there. Most tackles won. Harvey Rogers heads that list, but Joseph Juranovic is not far behind. 15 for him from three appearances. Most dribbles made. We have Noah Okafor on the list. Uh, he has 12 dribbles from four appearances. Also has nine key passes. Also, clean sheets. Rui Silva is top of the list, but we all have one on that list. And then fewest conceded. Rui Silva does head that list with only two conceded from two appearances. And we also have Ryan Mullen, who has played a couple of games, but conceded three from two appearances also. Okay, in terms of the other stats, you can see games one, Piotrowski three, cross completion, Connor Gallagher with 62%. Tackles per 90 minutes, Joseph Juranovic with 4.61. Shots on target, Supernat Moanta with 10. We have Okafor, foul per 90 minutes with 4.08. Tackles per 90 minutes, nobody. Interceptions made, Sven Botman with 20. And average rating, Sven Botman with 7.80. So that is pretty much the start of season five wrapped up. We are at the 3rd of September 2025, which means that in tomorrow's episode, we will have pushed forward through the winter transfer window. And that means there will be just two episodes left. Can we retain the Premier League? Can we also retain the Champions League? Those are things you're going to have to come back and find out tomorrow. Plus, there will be new signings. There might be a few players going out too. All of that will be answered tomorrow, so don't forget to come back and check that out. But for this one, if you're still at this point in the video and still listening to me, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button already, please consider doing so. It helps the channel so, so much. It helps me to get these videos out to so many more people, and I really do appreciate everybody who takes their time to interact with the channel. But for this one, I'm going to wrap it here. Go and check out another video on the channel. There's something for everybody, and I will see you soon on another video.